Expanding our knowledge through those amongst us is a privilege we take for granted. Join me as we explore the minds of our fellow beings to unlock their knowledge for ourselves. It is time for a guest entry. But first, a quick disclaimer. Most of the guests I've had on were recorded through Discord due to us being long distance. If the quality dips, it's due to my connection. But I hope each of these conversations brings you new knowledge of the creative and cultural arts. Today, you get to listen to a conversation between myself and Michael ABR, or MABR. He is the author of Bounty, The Hunters of Vanaheim. I had a great time chatting with him about tabletop RPGs, building expanding universes, and more. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Today, I have on a, an avid role player, uh, a writer as well, a novelist, Michael. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Have you? Thank you for having me on. Pleasure to be here, man. So, I want to hear about Bounty, the Hunters of Vanaheim. I am not. I didn't dive too far into it to to the actual uh, description that you have on your website. Um, if you can describe it for us, please, that would be amazing. The Hunters of Anaheim is just a simple story, really. <laughs> or, uh, you know, that's at least what I like to say. Uh, it's a science fantasy act taking place in the world of Vanaheim, which hmm. is uh, the land of sorcery and magic. Oh. It's a science fantasy novel, and it follows the story of a group of bounty hunters as, through the twists and turns of fate, they uh, meet each other and track down the most expensive bounty of all time. Oh, wow. And who is this expensive bounty? A criminal overlord known only by the name of a uh, syndicate. So shadowy and uh, mysterious that some people aren't even sure whether or not he exists. Huh. I I love I love bounty hunter stories. It like like that that's probably one of my favorite things about like tabletop top RPGs. If I were to play a character, I'd want to be like a bounty hunter or, or some kind or like a gladiator. Well, one of those two. But um but yeah, like that that's that's really cool. And um so this is a science like this is a science fantasy world, but it's like it's filled with like, sorcery and magic and all that stuff. Can you explain kind of like a little bit of the lore behind it all of Vanaheim? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I've always, have you ever heard the quote before where technology that is advanced enough is indistinguishable from magic? Yeah. Uh, I I think, uh, yeah, you probably have. So that's kind of sort of the idea here. A mixture. I've always loved mixing like science fiction and like high tech stuff and magic because level they're kind of indistinguishable you have something you don't understand and you have to go through this complex way of uh going about it like okay I, i'm gonna i had to guess whether or not this is uh science fiction or magic yeah yeah so i i, I think so, that like, so, uh, i think that science fiction kind of like gets to the point where you it's it becomes like the the Im- the impossible made probable and you you know that it could happen sometime in your future but the technology just hasn't gotten to that point but magic is is like defined as something that we just don't quite understand and it like it just is inter- interchangeable between like the science the, the the fictional elements of of science and and technology and advancement 
can become magic just like like if you were to bring a cell phone back back in time like just a hundred years ago they'd just be like what the heck yeah all your all the knowledge in your fingertips it is a devilish device <laughs> i was literally just thinking of that yeah <laughs> and if they ask you how it works how, how would you even explain that yeah this uh, little metal box it has liquid crystals in it yeah, it's... took a different type of crystal and flattened it, and then we put lightning in this crystal, and we told the lightning what to do. Yeah, it, it's cra- it's crazy to think about how advanced our, our technology is, even though we're just so we're so used to it. it. It just becomes normal at a certain point. Yeah, like okay, imagine this you. Here's a way of explaining it. I can uh, get a metal, metal-like metal slate, hit a certain combination of runes, mm-hmm. speak some words into it, and 30 minutes later, a man bound to my will will show up at my door for piping hot pizza. It's <laughs> just using a phone. To, like, call someone. Doing that. It's like, if you're to go back in time, like you said, for magic i can summon someone at will and hear their voice or see their face even yeah across across miles and miles of deserts and plains and and the world all together oh yeah it's sure it's crazy and that's why that's why i personally find it so easy to mix uh science fiction and fantasy together yeah and it's fun if i want a wizard to uh add a code well all that technomancer man oh yes i i love technomancy that that's one of those things where it's like it's it's just an interesting concept to kind of meld magic into this idea of being able to like manipulate technology in some in some aspect yeah uh have you ever uh, done IT work before or see, know someone who does IT work? Uh, depends on the type of IT work. Uh, I I used to be a lighting tech for uh, working for my dad, actually. He he owns a DJ company and like would do li- lighting for like weddings and, and corporate events and stuff. So I used to run the lighting systems and all, and all of that. Um, but that's the only like oh. tech like I IT work that I've ever really done, um, I'm not too I'm not too like tech savvy. I would say, <laughs> even though I'll be honest, me either. The most IT work I've done was when I worked as an RA at a university and uh, would try to figure out how the email system worked, which I still can confidently say I don't fully understand it. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. Then you see these guys who are like, you're like, hey, I'm having X, Y, Z issue with this device. And they go, oh, simple. They just like wave their hand over it, touch it a few times and boom, it's working again. Yeah. It's like, how do you know how to do this? Yeah, there's like different, there's different parts of, of, of it. And it's crazy because that, that's like the, that's like the, the coding aspect and the, and the, like just the technical aspect. Sometimes it's, it's easier to understand but it gets more and more difficult the deeper you go into it and that's like the that's a very interesting thing about it is like you can just you see someone take something and then they do it very easily because it's it's a simple task for them but then when you go to try to figure it out it's actually like more involved because you just can't quite understand it all you all you know is like oh this is that app, and I'll click on this app, and then it'll give me this, and then it'll give me this menu, and then that's it. But like some people will be like, "Oh, uh, you have to make sure to uh, link up your web browser to to this thing, and then and then embed a code into the the lines so that it." I I don't know if I'm saying the right words for this. <laughs> yeah. It. I, I I won't be able to tell you otherwise, man. I <laughs> I'll say it's 
correct for the sake of uh, yeah, the sake of uh, the show. <laughs> yeah. So so and you got you got a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. So with with bounty and uh, these these hunters, these these bounty hunters in in Vanaheim that are searching for this this syndicate individual who is a mysterious like evil person. I'm I'm assuming. I'm assuming he's evil. Um, uh, yes, one would very much assume he is evil. Okay. Yes. Cool. <laughs> no, no spoilers here. If it, like anyone wants wants to buy it or like purchase it, uh, check out your website. Uh, it is m a b r the writer dot com, I believe. Uh, yep, that should be it. Uh, so maybe are the writer dot com. So what is what is M A B R? Well, that that that's my name. I have oh. a very long name. My oh, so, <laughs> that, that's just my full name abbreviated. Oh, really? Wow. I uh, I'll use yeah. Uh, I uh, usually I usually just go by Michael. Or uh, was in class in university, I would go by M B R. MBR. MBR was a a nickname one of my well, one of my favorite professors gave me. Oh wow! So many Michaels in the class, and You're just like MBR, like okay, we're calling <laughs> this one Michael, this one's Mikey, so on, so on. And he's like, okay, you, you're MBR. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> and I uh, just stuck with that. That's cool. and then I added the A into it later on because uh, that's also part of my name. Yeah, I, w- I was wondering if, uh, if that was like a part of your lore or something, and like I, I didn't know if because sometimes sometimes people will will decide to have a pen name that is like attached to their their lore and 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 their stories and all that stuff. So I, I was just curious. That's very interesting. I have several different pen names, but uh, technically that is one of them. But this is approximation to my real name. Hmm. Uh, fair enough, I'll, in Zoom, I'll go by Michael ABR. Michael ABR. Mike Myber. My, my, Myber? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, with the so, what brought you to the science fantasy genre specifically? Did like, did something happen in your childhood that like kind of like bring you to that? Like like. For for example, Star Wars was was one of my like greatest inspirations, and that's considered science fantasy in my opinion. Um, some people would think it's science fiction. I'm like, um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, Star Wars. Star Wars was a uh, Star Wars was one of those things where it did uh, really bring me into the realm of science fantasy. I, I used to be one of the people where I was like, oh, yeah, Star Wars is science fiction. Hmm. But that was before I ever knew the term science fantasy. Yeah. And when I learned the term science fantasy, I was like looking around and like, huh, Star Wars is science fantasy. Because you got wizards and space monks who battle with swords made of lasers. And they use magic against each other, and you got like spirits and ghosts and uh, monsters and demons in it. Well, especially in the extended universe. Yeah, yeah, it is much more than a science. It's much more than science fiction. I'll say that. Much, and I do one hundred percent agree with you. It is science fantasy. Yeah, it's it's much more than than science fiction. And like I, I I enjoy science fiction. Like one of my favorite works of science fiction is uh, Interstellar. Um, not quite. Not, not sure. I've heard you, many good things about that. You have not seen the movie. I have not seen the movie. Well, not that I can remember, but I have heard many good things about it, In- and it is on my bucket list to watch. Yeah, I I definitely recommend it. Um, Matthew McConaughey is pretty pretty good in it, and the story is very much science fiction. It because it's like, oh, what what would happen in like if the population started declining and we needed to go off and start uh 
populating into in, like populating on on different planets because our our world was is getting kind of destroyed basically um we can't we can't survive on it any longer and so it it's it's a very very interesting very interesting movie uh that one and arrival i'm not sure if you've seen that one either arrival it's that with, sounds very it's familiar. with amy adams yes the yeah that one yes i i Arrival is, uh, I do enjoy Arrival. I have to say the first time I watched it, I thought it was pretty boring. Yeah. And I didn't like it too much. But then the second time I watched it, I was like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. He, it is so much more enjoyable that second watch through. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very interesting. seen it before and didn't like it. I recommend watching it again because it's much more enjoyable the second time. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. It, it is it is a slow movie because it's not like Inter- Independence Day where where the you the aliens come down and start attacking and you're just like oh crap. You're it's more like oh what would ha- actually happen if aliens came down and we had to solve what they want with us without starting an all out war with them and making them kill us because most likely they have more advanced technology than than we do. If they're the ones that came here first, yes, uh, I like it because of that because it is genuinely realistic of what ninety nine percent most likely the case would be if uh, extraterrestrials ever did visit Earth and well let us know that they were visiting and the grand arrival like that. Yeah, funny enough, uh, I watched that movie the second time I watched that movie was in a uh, linguistics class. Oh, really? We were learning about, uh, yeah, we were learning about the theory of, oh, I forget its name. I am so sorry, Burke. That, that's the name of the professor who's teaching the class. <laughs> I am bringing shame to him right now. Uh, there is a linguistic theory that language itself changes how we think. And your yes. first language, like your birth language, that, that's the entire basis of the movie is how language can change the way you think. Every single language, they do have many different uh, cues and contexts and things like that, and how the uh, the language itself sets things up. Some language, like, like English, is one of those languages where it's a quote unquote forward speaking language, mm-hmm. where you say everything in order. While there's other languages which, uh, I guess, reverse is the best way to say it, where it's like Japanese or Spanish in a way yeah. they're almost reversed and how the context and the structure of the sentence works is really fascinating so the theory that these languages could affect how your brain actually works is very interesting in my opinion yeah it's actually very interesting and I've, I've also heard that there, there is a language in the world I've, I, I don't know the language itself but um, like I, I don't remember the, the name of it, but I heard that it's an actual, it's a language that doesn't involve putting I or like, like, per, like personal stuff, like, like I, you, any, anything that involves a, like a person, it, it's more just very ambiguous in, in those terms. And it actually, really? ma- it actually makes them not think of, like, like they're not self-centered people because they don't think in eyes or use or anything like that. They, they think of like, we like, like all of us, we, we all are together. We all, all one because of their language and how, and how it is derived. That is very fascinating. It, it's things like that, where I want to say that theory is, incorrect or it doesn't necessarily exist in that way but that language is almost proof otherwise about it yeah i mean it's it's a part of our it's a part of our own like subconscious and like how we how we perceive things and and derive meaning from from objects within the world from within our own reality and so lang- language has always been like a, like a, the cornerstone of our entire civilization and our 
like our evolution because we are social creatures and we want to be able to communicate with each other. And in order to communicate with, with each other, we need to understand what the other person is, is saying. Yeah, exactly. And those subconscious cues from the language and how it works, that's what, that's what everything's built up on. Mm-hmm. So, society, culture, all that, it's built up on language and stories. Yes. Language and stories. We are the culture makers. Yep, in- indeed. Stories are one of the uh, most important parts of society. And it, that, that's not just uh, us tooting our own horn here. Mm-hmm. It's, it's real. Uh, history class. We- uh, you learn about the history of your country, the world, all that. And what is all that but story that you're reading? A real story. Yeah, or- it's- when you're with family. Yeah, you would tell a story. You're with family, what do you do? You, you, you'll tell a story about your day, and that is like that, that is your ability to communicate a like some kind of feeling that you had at a certain point, and stories convey meaning, feelings, emotions, um, reason, and all, and all that stuff. And you're, you're trying to understand, break, break down your own, your own personality to to figure out who you are within the confines of this existence that we're living in. Yeah, exactly. The thing, everyone is a story. It's always a story within everything from how it was made, why it exists, how did it get here, and no matter where you go, you, you can't avoid that. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you were to be even you, the viewer, listener, I guess, right now, if you were to, I'm like, oh, yeah, I was listening to this, uh, this guest, and they were saying, uh, they were talking about stories. You're, you're telling a story about stories. Yeah. Yeah, so how... Would you go about telling a story? What kind of media? What media types do you use to tell your stories, Michael? Uh, personally, now uh, personally, I have always loved writing. Uh, in particular, prose style uh, novel format is I've been mostly uh, accustomed to. I have well. When I was little, when I was little, I always, uh, before I could really write that well, I would draw comic books on paper and uh, steal all the printer paper and draw on it and then staple it together and then uh, be like, oh, yeah, I made a comic book. Oh, that's then cool. I, uh, during, yeah, then I started uh, writing. Then I was like, oh, yeah, I can, I can do a lot of writing. And I'd uh, be like, and on my mother's computer when I was little, I type up stories and all that, and then I print them out and <laughs> use more of the printer paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of printer paper. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know that feeling. I've, I've gone through so much. <laughs> now I've gotten better, and I, uh, I use my own printer paper or notebook paper. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I used to. I very much. Uh, oh, go on. I I used to take a an, an like a full notebook whenever we go on some kind of vacation or something like that. I would go, and instead of going out and having fun, going to like a pool or or something like that, I'd want to spend some time sitting down inside the inside the hotel room, and just start writing. And I just would write as much as I could. Uh, and that's how I actually got through a few of my, few of my stories that, that I wrote when I was like in middle school and high school. Oh, very nice. I too, am also a fan of the, uh, write anywhere and everywhere. Club. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's easier. It's like, it's like you I have, you have more ideas. Oh yeah. When I discovered that, there was a Google Docs app on the phone 
Oh, and it yeah. synced up like with your computer and all that. I was like, this, this changes everything. <laughs> and my, uh, my sometimes gosh. I would. Sometimes I'd write so much like, oh, no, the app is lagging and running slow. I'm going to have to make a new doc. Oh, dear. Yeah, <laughs> so much I, of I a have single that document issue. that it like caused the app to crash. Yeah. I, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Everyone else just says I'm crazy, but I am very glad I'm not the only one with well, this issue. Once you hit like over over around like 50 pages, it, it, it just starts going slower and slower and slower. And you're just like, wow, what the heck? <laughs> Yeah. And some points, I got to one point when uh, writing on the Google Docs app, I'd, I'd be typing, and there'd be a 10 second delay. I type, I type something out, and I could like stop typing, and for 10 seconds, I could just watch as all the words I wrote would just like appear, and like it was, it was funny to watch. Yeah, so I was I, like, yeah, maybe I should start up a new doc. I've had that a few times too. Um, that, that, that is actually how I uh, I did write most of uh, Bounty the Hunters of Anaheim. Oh, I yeah. uh, I was on the go. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, and I got to that point several I, times. I'll, I'll be at work and I and then I'll go to the bathroom and instead of actually going to the bathroom, I'll just be be on my phone and writing, <laughs> writing something. <laughs> oh, same, same. <laughs> I uh, I totally wouldn't you know, write in class or anything like that, like that, of course not. I was taking my studies very seriously, mm -hmm. especially in uh, the subjects I adore, like math. I, I cannot yeah, say the same. Definitely paying attention in math. Yeah, I, I, I totally <laughs> paid attention in math and wasn't uh, doodling or writing stories half the time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually, uh, funny enough, that is how I got the, uh, the main inspiration for writing Hunters of Anaheim. Oh, really? Be really bored in math class one day. Uh, there are some students in that class who had a tendency to argue with the math professor on or not something was correct. Now, I know that sounds like, oh, yeah, that's great for university. That, that's great. You should always challenge whatever theory and whatnot. But uh, come on, this is Math 101. I, I'm i pretty sure algebra has been discussed enough. Yeah. 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 I mean, th so this isn't like uh, – we're not at Harvard, man. This is uh, Math 101. I, can, can we uh, – Also, you don't need to really – Can we go – I feel like I feel like you don't really need to argue too much as long as you come to the same conclusion, like the same answer. Like, uh, yeah, I, exactly. I don't see I don't see what the problem is. Like, just don't don't argue with your professor about it. Like, just just keep it to yourself. And you found out a new way to go about it. If it's easier for you, then it's easier for you. <laughs> Definitely, you don't necessarily have to follow the same formula and all that. As long as you get to that that location yeah but unfortunately these people were getting it wrong and were trying to uh convince the professor that their answer was right and uh the answer the professor had was wrong wow wow yeah so sitting in class for like 30 extra minutes just like oh dear i i, I just you know you get a little bored and then you start doodling and then you realize you ran out of a uh, paper for doodling <laughs> You just draw these like little symbols, like these little emblems. That, that's what I did, and I was just like looking. At it. I was like, okay, what do these emblems mean? I then so and then, I, I was like, okay, they belong to this character, and this character does. This character is a cowboy. That's that's exactly cowboy. what I would do too. The bounty hunter. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you just you start going down the rabbit hole. Okay, he's a bounty yeah, hunter. You, now, where does he live? That that's what probably the best. How does the, this happen? That's the best part about about writing is that when you're when you're just on the go somewhere and you're not really doing anything and and you just like, you're like oh, I'm just gonna start kind of doodling, make, making something up, and make something, and then you make something, and then you're like, hmm, what what could the story behind this be? And then you just start going down and down the rabbit hole, and it just keeps going. You're like, oh my gosh. And then eventually you have a a like 
five hundred page novel, and you're just like, "Where did my life go?" <laughs> yep. You're like, "Oh, you just wake up one day, and that's that's what happened." Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you, you look at a little symbol on a piece of paper, and th- then you look up and you realize you've been uh, spaced out for three hours thinking about it. <laughs> That's true. That's so true. Uh, so for your own writing inspirations, um, actually for, for for the media types, you you specifically are, are a novelist um, through and through. Uh, but I believe you did uh, you, uh, anything yeah. else. Like, do do you do do you write poetry? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a huge fan of poetry. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't Don't... realize I, I'm mainly a I'm mainly a novelist. Mm-hmm. For uh, recently, I've recently I've been in the process of uh, working on some projects to uh to branch out. Yeah, same. Honestly, honestly, same. Yeah. This podcast is kind of, is kind of like one of those those branch out things that I've like I've actually very much enjoyed doing. The only the only thing I I don't like about it is the editing process. The editing process is the most irritating part about it, but other than that, it is fun to write out the scripts because then it like kind of expands my lore and it's kind of like an audiobook format, so I just I just kind of go with the flow and it helps me with my own like world building and expanding and all that stuff. I do recommend it if you ever want to just like just create more content and it, it's is kind of it's actually free to just create a podcast off the bat. You just need a a microphone. You could probably use your phone, but like getting getting a, a basic microphone, um is not too hard, and then they just run like fifty bucks or something like that, and then just plug it in. Yeah, a, a decent microphone. Uh, the one I'm using right now, Blue Snowball. Oh yeah, it's like a decent microphone you can get. Yeah, not not not. It may cost a little bit of money. Not a uh, too expensive, luckily, and it's reasonable enough audio quality. I know some people talk about like the Yeti microphones. I think. Yeah, I I have a yeah. uh, my my brother actually gave me his Yeti, uh, but I don't use that anymore. I I just got new podcast equipment, and it is it it is out of this world amazing. I love it. <laughs> um, the microphone that I actually have is a, a Pod Mic by Rode, and it is actually it's only a hundred dollars. So like it's it's, oh, it's a steal. Not bad, not bad. I know that may sound like like to to, to the uninitiated that may sound like a lot like hundred dollars for a microphone. That that's whack. But <laughs> no, microphones can get like yeah. really up there, like, uh, like thousands of dollars. Streaming just dropped several hundred on a microphone. It's like oh jeez, yeah, wow. And yeah, it's like that. I guess it really does make a difference. So if you can find a, a decent microphone for like hundred dollars or under, that is amazing. And especially if it's like decent, decent quality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you, uh, podcasting, how did you get into this and why? If you don't mind me asking that is. Well, I, I wanted to start a podcast for the longest time. Um, I wasn't quite sure exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, I had this idea in my head oh, like a long time ago of just kind of doing a maybe like a tabletop RPG kind of podcast thing, but then there was so much like added on to it, like, and there was just like it, it's already saturated market. And I wanted to try to focus on my own stories and, and all that stuff. And when I started this podcast, I, w- I didn't know where it was going. I just kind of like, I, I just kind of started writing. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to actually start this. Because what everyone says in, in the space is, uh, if, you, if you want to start a podcast, start it. 
don't care don't don't worry about like when to start it <laughs> like what like what you need and all that stuff just just do it and then do it every week once a week um and just keep going and once you got that down you can start getting uh, like more and more gear and all that stuff and when i when i started it i had this idea of i want to expand my lore because i just want to keep, like produce as much content as i can before my my game gets released and and people start exploring the universe i want them to actually have like a grasp onto the universe uh, that way it's like oh they're not they're not kind of like reading the reading the book the first time and they don't know anything about the universe and like when when they go to like like it's like it's like with D&D you've already had so much time to to understand it sometimes you can well, yeah. you, you can go into it but the dm needs needs a, like a lot of background and 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 stuff and i didn't background ha- the context all that yeah yeah I, I didn't have any of that stuff um i i have some oh. of it i i have some of it now uh but like the the podcast is it, it's also fun to to just do and tell stories through because like it it makes me able to know like it, it's like the the continuity things and 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 knowing like where where certain things li- line up and planning it out like from the beginning i have this full storyline planned out uh that's going to go beyond season 3 of my podcast and and into my live stream that i'm going to be doing for like a tabletop rpg sense and that's going to be like late, like next year but the the podcast is like it it just makes it easier to get into the idea of oh uh my voice is being recorded and people can hear me um what am i gonna do like i don't want to stutter or anything like that i already stutter and and i have like issues with with talking to people sometimes i'm i'm, I'm an introvert by nature but this is actually getting me out of my yeah. out of my comfort zone and helping me kind of grow as a person and helping me uh talk to other people about their their storytelling adventures and i just wanted to be like all about storytelling and get getting people excited about new new stories that are coming out in the future by indie authors writers and and novelists uh, creators of all kinds, artists. I I want to start like really branching out into different avenues, but I want to keep it focused on the storytelling aspect, and I want it to be like newer stuff rather than um the same old rehashed same old same old. Yeah, the same old same old. Because I mean, Star Wars Star Wars is great. I it inspired me and all that stuff. Uh, but eventually. I feel like the culture is going like the the culture is going haywire right now and we need to we need to establish different like different things. We we we're, we're stagnating. We're we're stagnating like crazy. We're we're sticking with the same thing yeah. o- over and over again and uh, with Marvel and now, yeah. I was just going to say this is going to be a very controversial take and I'm a uh, Currently waiting for the mob of the pitchforks and torches to show up at my door for saying this, but I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little burnt out on Marvel stuff. Oh no, no, same. Like, Honestly, same. I, I used to get so excited mm-hmm. when it was announced that a Marvel movie was coming out because it'd be like in a couple of years, and it'd be like boom, a new Marvel movie. It's like, oh my gosh, did, did you hear Captain America? Yeah. The last Captain America movie was like 30 years ago. Oh my gosh, this is great. What? Four? Or wait, did I get the releases mixed up? I, I don't know. It's There's so many. Okay, there's so many now. I forget the releases. <laughs> yeah. It was like every couple you had, every couple of years, there was a Marvel movie. And you always were like hoping to get a little wind of like a new Marvel movie coming. Yeah. I, and then it turned into an annual thing. And it was still great because it's like, oh, I wonder what Marvel movie they're going to do next. Yeah, you're there's like, you're like oh, one. it's, it's going to keep coming. It's going to keep coming, and then eventually it got to a point. Yeah, 
they, they started doing twice a year. They had the summer release and then the December release. And I was like, okay, I can count on one original and one sequel. Mm-hmm. But then they just started pumping out more, and now there's all the series, and it's it's overwhelming. And it's like, oh, uh, oh, uh, the, this series just wrapped up. Oh, now, now there's immediately a new series. I don't even have time to digest what happened in in WandaVision and now Loki's coming out and uh, Loki, I'm not sure if Loki's still going or it's ended, but now there's that, uh, uh, the Dr. Strange guy whose name I can't remember. His movie's coming out soon. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And, and, and they're already talking about my new series. My biggest issue is, is how they advertise everything now. And like the, the trailers just show everything, everything that happens in like basically the entire storyline <laughs> and you're like yep. oh i don't really want to see it now because i just kind of like you literally spoiled it for me in the trailer that you're advertising to me like the new star like the new spider-man you know movie what? i'm not sure if you've seen the the trailer for it i don't i, I won't spoil I'm it for be, you be honest i didn't even know there's a trailer okay okay <laughs> I, i'm not gonna spoil so, it for you so cool so don't don't worry don't don't watch it if you end up watching it I'm sorry I, I, I'm pretty sure if I watch it it's going to be like every I'm going to see the entire movie and it's like okay X Y Z happens yeah yeah you 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 and, basically know the yeah. gist of it I mean there there might be some surprises inside it but the the surprises are like my big my when when this happened it was when Thor Ragnarok came out the the trailer and they showed the Hulk and I was just like. Like, why? Why did you have to show like that was like the biggest reveal in inside the movie for Thor Ragnarok, and yeah, they just, could have just they could have just that not was a lot done of that. Potential they shot too early. They shot way too early, and and like everyone was like already wanted to see the movie because the movie like it felt very much like Guardians of the Galaxy, and they were already like like hyping it up to be that way. And then when they showed the Hulk, it was like, oh, something like, oh, the Hulk's going to be in it. Oh, the Hulk's going to be in it. Oh, but like, I mean, that was like the, that was the big reveal. And then when you actually watch yeah. the movie, most of it is just joking around and, and funny, funny games. And. Yeah. Uh, that is a uh, one, one like little thing that's just uh, about the Marvel but it's recently become, it feels like every movie has become Guardians of the Galaxy 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I, I love the original flavor of 4. You had, it was a fantasy realm, you had the Norse gods, you had mm-hmm. all this. But Ragnarok was a, a little too serious, TBH. It still had that nice flavor of fantasy. Oh, wait, not for Ragnarok. Uh, Dark World. Dark, Dark World. Dark the, World. Uh, yeah. Elves and the, uh, li- the, the, the crystal that's kind of like the stuff that's inside a thermometer. Yeah. <laughs> and then when Ragnarok came out, it's like it did a whole 180, and it's like, uh-huh. okay, this feels like Guardians of the Galaxy again. Like it- and the Guardians of the Galaxy flavor is nice for Guardians of the Galaxy. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but it, then that flavor just started like creeping into all the other different films. It's like, it's yeah, like, I don't want to have. It's like everything is a joke. Yes, exactly. Like everything's a, a joke. There's always a quippy one liner. Uh, part of me feels like the reason why. Uh, what was it? Infinity War. The Infinity Infinity War then Endgame. Mm-hmm. Part of me feels like why everyone was so psyched after Infinity War happened. And we're just like so amazed by it was the fact that at the end something different happened that was beyond the formula of what a regular Marvel movie was. Mm-hmm. Because in a Marvel movie, you can count on okay, hero has this problem at the beginning. There's X Y Z cool fight scene with uh, quippy jokes one, two, and three inserted through. Here's reveal a big bad fight scenes, ABC, mm-hmm. or 
X2, Y2, Z2. It's all formulaic. Here's sad moment. Here's happy moment that uh, quippy joke reduced the sadness. And now here, here's where hero wins. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I do love a good hero story. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm not saying like we need grim, dark, depressing stories. I'm saying when every single thing you produce is that, it, it does kind of get stale after a while. And saddening to see that. It, it, it does sadden me that I can't get that same enjoyment from a story that I used to have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now it's got depressing. So. <laughs> I hate not now now the place is within tabletop RPGs. That that's where I get my my great stories. I just finished a, my D&D campaign actually this past Tuesday. So that was oh, oh, makes me want to cry. Hey, nice. <laughs> And when I when a campaign finishes up, it's always uh it's always very bittersweet. But yeah. then it gets you uh, excited for that next campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I know you mentioned uh you were uh, developing your own uh tabletop RPG campaign uh book was it? Yeah, I have I have my your own, own my, book, my own system and rule book and <laughs> and uh, it's technically done. I'm just I'm just kind of make I'm I'm. Putting on the finishing touches, I'm making it more understandable for for people who are just picking it up. Because uh, when I play tested it, people have they, they don't necessarily read the the fine print. They they like the bolded letters and making sure that they can find everything uh, as 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 good as possible. Um, I have ideas to to work around it, and I have like I have ideas to kind of go with the times because the times are either going we're either going to uh go back to the stone age or we're going to advance further than than we ever have within the next 10 years. So one of those two. And if we go back to it's the stone age, I don't think I'm going to be <laughs> writing writing any books anytime soon. <laughs> so uh, maybe not writing books but carving in the stone tablets that's that, that's going to be the next oh, big yeah. thing if yeah, we go back to that, the that's stone age. that's why I'm working out I'm I'm getting I'm getting ready to start to start my uh, my carving my my carving skills Yeah yeah there you go <laughs> uh, pump iron so that way you can uh, break rock <laughs> <laughs> Yeah but uh, uh for actually, uh, oh, go go ahead going to say that does segue in uh something i want to talk about all this talk like you know marvel and their uh marvel movies kind of getting stale uh podcast dtrpgs that does get into something i uh i didn't want to talk about today yeah which uh we had mentioned before uh uh the idea of have you ever heard of multimedia i'm pretty sure you have but uh yeah. Okay, can you just uh what what what's multimedia? Humor me for for a second. Um multimedia like like a like a a a PowerPoint kind of stuff. I I Yeah, kinda of like uh where it's like I I go back to Marvel. Marvel is a, a good example. Is multimedia in the way where there's like multiple things yeah, happening within within the media? You itself. have the Marvel movie. You have the Marvel movie, mm-hmm. and it's based on uh, you have the Avengers movie, which is based on the Avengers comic book. And yeah. the thing is, with multimedia, it's the same story just told in different forms of media. Yeah, don't get me wrong. That that's that's great. Uh, you should diversify about that. But if you play Marvel video game based on the Avengers, it's just getting the same story again. It's just, okay, I can play through it now. In a novelized version of the Avengers movie, it's okay, it's the Avengers movie, but I can read it, but it's it's still the same thing. I, I see that as oh, just you, I see that as just a way to make money. Like it's it's like a money yeah ploy where like, like oh here here's the movie you, that you just paid for that you just watched here is the scripted version of it that you could pay for now 
and, and buy it so you could read it. I was like, okay. Can I yeah. just watch a movie? It, it does very little to, to add to the, I guess, to add to the universe. Mm-hmm. Now, what you're doing here, you got your, I know you got your codexes of lore and stuff. You got your podcast. You got your, got your, uh, your tabletop RPG. You got all that. You got your books. What you're doing is actually something that is, uh, starting to become very popular among writers, which yeah. is a big story media, some people call it. And you said it perfectly earlier yourself. I have people going, I don't want people to go into this blind. I want them to kind of have an idea of what is going on. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I'm, a, I, I'm an author. I, I write books. I, I write. I wrote a book, and it's set in a big world. I'm sure there are many authors, probably many listening to this, story writers, everything, who they're like, yeah, I have this world with all these amazing things in it, and I spent. I know a guy who was in an old writers group of mine. He spent six years coming up with how his magic system was mathematically feasible. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Do we know who the only person who knows about that is? You? That it or- comes <laughs> up like once in his novel. Yeah. And if you weren't like him explaining that to me, you'd never know. If he didn't tell you, you would never know. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he got a little upset when I brought this up to him. Like, wait, you spent six years doing this? That's cool. Props to you for dedication. But are you writing the book at all when you were doing this? He was like, oh, oh no, I, I have to make sure the magic system's perfect. Yeah, you, it, at, he, at a certain he point, got a little upset. Yeah, at, at a certain <laughs> point, you you, I I've I've come to this realization. Like, yes, at a certain point, there is a time where you have to, you know release whatever you have even if there's mistakes i because we we all want to be perfect we want all want it to be perfect but you're you're never going to have perfection and we yeah. just have, we have to realize that um my magic that loop of world building where it's yeah just you just uh keep building up so much it's like uh, sometimes i can work you out like tolkien and the similarian but Half the time, it's like half that stuff world building wise that you write down, no one's ever going to know about. Mm-hmm. Unless, unless, there's a big unless there. And that's uh, where the big story media comes into play. Uh, you, you mentioned something about your magic system, real quick. Oh, yeah. Like, well, yeah. What is your magic system? Well, it is pretty in depth. Uh, it kind of goes into the, all the realms of of my lore, and within my within my universe, it's called the core realms, um, conglomerate of regal entities. The they're the seven entities, b- these beings, they're regal entities. Uh, they are basically the the universes them, themselves, uh, like the, their conscious manif- manifestations of the universe, uh, and each of them kind of put put in like different types of energies and into this into the core realms themselves when they converged and it created this core energy like kind of like key or chi or something like that and every living creature every living creature has these energies within them and they can manifest it uh manifest the the different types in in order to in order to basically wield like a kinetic state or something something like that they can use like kinetic uh, powers, which is the ability to manipulate mo- molecular structures within reality, and then um, there's like there's also magic, which is more like elemental based and, and arcane based. Arcane, as in it actually arcane stems from that which uh, is out outside of the core realms itself. So there's an expanded space that is the planar unity, which is technically where I allow for other people to be like, oh, my universe is within this planar unity, and they can like have their uni- the, your, oh. their entire their entire energies and all that stuff. And arcane is in my in my in core in the in the core realms is technically 
energies that come from those other realms outside of outside of my realms themselves. And so I, I've Sounds I've pretty cool, yeah. I've created this entire this entire kind of blanketed uh, universe to like I've created this foundation so that others can also kind of build upon it and, or even just bring in their like like an omniverse in, in a way um, where they they yeah. have their own universe outside and if we wanted to do a a a, a, a what's it called um, collaboration if we wanted to collab, collab collaborate on a story or something like that and like one of their characters went through some alternate like portal dimension thing and it they popped into the core realms and then like all this crazy stuff happened uh and their their entire like armada came and like had a like multiverse war or something like that it's crazy crazy stuff could could go on you know um but i i leave that to tabletop rpgs mainly that's why i created my my game is so that like you could literally just kind of build off of it as much as you want um yeah yeah. You got a got a use for it. Mm-hmm. You 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 got a use out of it. You actually applied it, and someone is going to be able to look at that, enjoy it. It's not something that's going to be uh, sitting in some Google Doc that gets auto deleted like seven years down the line. It's actually something someone can look at and bring them in, and they can enjoy that. Which is great. That that is it's what I want to. It's what you should do. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the idea of what a, like the big story media is about. Uh. Now, go, going back to the Hunters of Anaheim, the the story set in a big world, much like uh, all other stories set in a big world. You got a lot of things going on. Mm-hmm. There's lore the, the the world had its own lore there's everything going on there's all these mentions of this stuff throughout the book just like any other book even if told in a person omnipotent 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 person yeah i know whatever the heck's going on omnipotent <laughs> yeah 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 that word that i cannot pronounce for the life of me <laughs> yeah even if you do that it's it takes uh you can't go like, oh, yeah, our heroes did this, X, Y, Z. Now, now let me tell you about a uh, well, pizza shop down the street. Mm. And here's all this information about it. Nothing's ever done with it. Back to the story. Yeah. So like, no. oh, yeah, you can't go on a – It's you could. You theoretically could, but that takes the reader out of it. Mm-hmm. So you're stuck where, okay, I want to tell people about this lore – know how and that's where the story medium comes in story media comes in but this podcast is a great example you're telling people about lore and things and this and that it's it's good it's you reach more people that way yeah uh the way i heard it described to me from multiple different people was it's like a house your series your world that's a house and you're trying to get people in the front door and my front door is my book. That, that, that's my front door. It's like, here, c- come on in. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to get people in. They're going to enjoy it. Sure. But there's some people who are just going to take a look at it and be like, ah, that, thanks man. That's not for me. I don't necessarily like that. Yeah. And yeah. then they walk away. And I guess you missed out on that for the business standpoint. You miss out on that customer, that consumer, that person who you want to get to your work, view your world, and see all the hard work you've put into it. Yeah. And how do you get more people to enter in the house? Okay, you don't want to go in the front door. What if we go in the back door? Say, a podcast about the world itself. Uh, currently, I am, uh, I'm actually in the process of uh, produce a few podcasts, one of which oh, really? I am... Uh, one of, yeah, one of which is uh, directly set in a uh, world of Vanaheim. Oh, and that's cool. And the main cool. idea behind the podcast is 
uh, help uh, it every single part of the world that can't be mentioned in the book, which is wouldn't fit, or wouldn't fit in for whatever reason, can be talked about on the podcast like this. Uh, imagine a podcast set in universe of uh, just uh, some characters talking about things going on. Uh, it's yeah, the setup's going to be like a radio show. It, it's set yeah. up like a radio show, and we got the uh, <laughs> narrator discussing oh, that... things and talking. I This is going to make me sound uh, much older than I am, but I am a huge fan of uh, public radio. Yeah. Like, so... I, I love, like, driving and, like, listening to the public radio, feeling like uh, I'm a 70 years old. Like, ah, oh, Sonny, <laughs> let me uh, tune in to what's uh Jammer Drive's got to say today, oh, ha, ha, what a wonderful take that is. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's, that's actually yeah, pretty good. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, I got the uh, the Vander Brothers narrating the podcast, so so that's good. They're, oh, uh, wow. A couple weirdos I know. They're cool. <laughs> they uh, sound suspiciously like me, but I, I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and... Uh, th- that's the one I can mainly talk about. There's a different podcast that's uh, that is currently in production that we can uh, we may be seeing the uh, uh, the release of here soon. The base of Baldy, it's called, and it's it's a sort of another radio podcast, but it's just talking about weird happenstance and stuff. It's like uh, you ever heard Coast to Coast AM, the radio show? No, I have not. Oh, uh, well, if you're into, like, the paranormal and, like, you know, all that funky stuff where it's like, oh, I want to sit, I'm going to sit in the dark at night and turn on the radio and hear stories about ghosts and aliens and stuff like that, then uh, the Coast to Coast is a good radio show. It's on, like, KFI AM640, yeah. Hmm. And it, like, starts at, like, uh, I think we have the same local time. Yeah, we do have the same local time. It starts at, like weekdays if you ever want to check that out check it out uh base of baldy is like heavily inspired by it i'll just say that uh can't talk too much about that one okay <laughs> fortunately yeah but uh yeah. do you do you have your own studio uh wait i am sitting in my studio right now oh sweet it is yeah uh yeah, the studio is a little uh, funky because I've got my desk right here, my mic, my highly advanced uh, microphone setup that is just a microphone with a sock over it. Oh, I yeah. have my uh, <laughs> patented uh, resting machine behind me that is totally not my bed. <laughs> yeah, I, I just uh, I just record all my stuff from my uh, my house. Oh, that's that, that's yeah. But, uh, that's nice. Yeah, me, me t- same, honestly. I, I'm I'm sitting right next to my bed too, I, and my 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 room is a mess. So, <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, the viewers don't, the listeners don't know that though. <laughs> they don't. They don't. You, that that's up they, to their imagination. They skipped that part, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, although. Listeners, uh, t- pay very careful attention to what we j- to this like interaction here. We are currently sitting in our rooms, doing this from laptop, a phone, anything like that. It, it it's not hard to expand your own world like this. You can say you're a writer. You can have a. I'm not saying you need to, but you could have a podcast and discuss the the parts of your world, however much you like, and. Mm-hmm. Say in your book, you can put like a link that says like, oh yeah, to find out more about X, Y, Z, this book, check out my podcast. You can put that up on your social media pages. That, now, this is going to sound funny, but a couple of years ago, I was the type of guy who was like, podcasts? Why would I ever listen to one of those? That's weird. No, I don't like podcasts. And I'm like, ooh, new episode, click. Yeah, yeah, I love listening to them like while uh while cleaning or uh, writing anything like that, doing homework. Uh, uh, so, how many podcasts and, ha- have you done? Have you done yourself? Uh, I, I haven't produced. These are like the first ones I'm uh going along and producing. I, I've been in a couple different podcasts. 
a couple for school, some with friends, just yeah. uh, talking about stuff like this. One podcast I did, we were, uh, it was a heated debate on a uh, fast food rating system on what we uh, personally thought where a certain fast food restaurant belonged on a tier list <laughs> based on, uh, you know, how good it tasted, the quality of the food, the quantity of the food, the price of the food. Oh, wow. Which one? Wh- Little Caesars gets uh, near like S tier because decent ish pizza for a reasonable price, reasonable quantity, reasonable quality. Hmm. It's the best all around you can get. Hmm. Yeah. So, so, you know, stuff completely related to writing like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could easily make a story about a, about a, uh, a franchisee. Who, who creates the best franchise, uh, restaurant like uh, like McDonald's or something like that, and turn it into like a full like <laughs> a full thing too. So like anything, yeah, anything can become a story. Could. Like for anything ex- can become a story. Yeah, for for example, part of a story. Yeah, for example, like what like what I do, I I joke with my cousin because we we go bowling and um. I enjoy bowling a lot, right. and hey, bowling we, is a uh, attrition sport. We, we whenever we go bowling, we, we start uh, joking around. I, I'll, I'll just be like, "Oh, and the bowling gods, we pray to them," and and we start talking about like making like a some crazy comic book where there's like a a bowling master and he has to fight through a league. Of of bowling legends, and he <laughs> prays to the bowling gods to to give him the greatest focus of of them all, and and it could be like a legit thing. It could be really funny. <laughs> Man, that's like uh, that's like the Big Lebowski crossed with like the Lord of the Rings or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, story can come from anything. It's just something something like that. Maybe you could uh, turn it into like an interactive uh, game, like a choose your own storybook adventure where, okay, here's like the 10 chapters, one for each uh, frame of bowling. Yeah. And if you uh, got like a 7-10 split that you didn't pick up, turn to page 25. But if you got a spare, be sure to ch- turn to page 72. How well you do bowling is uh, <laughs> what ending you get. Oh, that would be really <laughs> cool. Wow. Jeez, I, I'd, I'd be down to work with you on that. If if I I don't know if you're a bowler. I, 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 I don't know if you're I, a bowler. I love bowling. Bowling, oh, is, sweet. bowling is one of my uh, favorite sports. Bowling and hockey. Uh, I I don't I don't watch much bowling, but I do love bowling myself. I go bowling with my friends, my family. It, we love bowling. So uh, you, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, <laughs> this new <laughs> interactive bowling story is coming out soon. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really cool. There Do you know go. how cool that would be? Oh, that'd be fun. It would be cool. That'd be really fun. I, I, I'm 100 percent down for this. Heck yeah! And yeah, ne- ne- next <laughs> time, next time, <laughs> next time we do a podcast, we'll we'll meet up. And maybe maybe we could like plan plan the podcast. Or oh, what if we did like, oh, damn, we did like a, a prequel podcast to the bowling. <laughs> Wrote a script. <laughs> Guys, did, did, there we go. I I, I am down a hundred percent for that. <laughs> go go a- actually bowl and and rec- and record a podcast while we're bowling. <laughs> Record a podcast while we're bowling. I know there's some decent bowling alleys in the area. I think that is 100 uh, percent decent. He's a uh, bowling. <laughs> um, no, I was never invited back again after cracking that joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the last topic I want to get to is your own experience with tabletop RPGs and. If they've ever like, in- inspired you, are, are you a DM or are you a player? I suffer from a, uh, well, I used to suffer from a uh, chronic DM syndrome. Oh. But uh, recently I have actually uh, been able to branch out and play some games, which is 
which is uh, nice. I, I'd like to send a shout out to the uh, who run my games who have made that sacrifice to run the games. Thank you very much for letting me play for the first time in like uh, think about like a good years. couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. But know that, that doesn't mean I, I don't like DMing. Uh, there's part there's parts to it that are great. DMing. Yeah, there, there, there's parts to it that are great. It like it allows you to just toy with the players, and and that that's yeah, that's probably the best part is when when they they're trying to figure out what the heck is going to happen, and you're just like laughing in the background maniacally. Um. Because at the same time, you have no idea what's going to happen either yeah. because you didn't make any notes. Yep, and then, <laughs> and then you're just improvising the entire thing. <laughs> yes, you have a, you know that they're going to go from A to Z. Yes. It started A, ended Z. But you don't know you what letters are... the rest of the alphabet to fill in. Yeah, you don't know what letters are <laughs> going to go next. It's not going to be a B, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Nope. It, it may not even be a C. You could no. get a Y, but then you're going to start right back at X. Yep. Then you're going to shoot to a N and then J. And for some reason, uh, you're going to hit the Greek alphabet in there somewhere. You just need to be ready for anything and just have fun with whatever whatever go, goes wrong because you just be like, okay, um... Now I'm going to, you know what? Let's take this character from from this character's backstory, uh, and have them come in to play, and then put this in front of them. This this op- object that they have to get around, and all, all these different things, and it just winds through. And that's kind of like so. What what I'm doing is, um, like you said with with story with the story media m- media, uh, my podcast has a storyline that is kind of go- going through uh through the actual game sessions that I have as well and then what I yeah. what I plan on doing is it it's going to you you you're going to you don't need to really like listen to the podcast to 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 get the full the full like campaign and uh, understanding of it for like when I when I do my live stream but it will greatly like it will greatly help what what I'm what I'm planning for my for my game if you did listen to it like basically I my podcast is like my podcast is like the Clone Wars uh the Clone Wars TV show for Star Wars uh whereas my like the live stream that I'm going to be doing is like the prequel trilogy the prequel trilogy is gonna is gonna yeah. have all, all that stuff, but then the Clone Wars kind of gives you like a greater, a greater uh, uh, what's standing. Yeah, yeah. You you just have you have a greater appreciation for for the for the actual uh, live stream. If like for for when I do my, I'm gonna do YouTube and all that stuff. Um, but once once that that's up, then. You can go back and listen to the to the podcast and listen to di- different parts of it that will better explain certain things that you might have missed before, and and good thing. Yeah, the good thing is that each of my episodes are like around like uh seven to ten minutes long, um, so they're not too long unless you're listening to a guest recording like this or if you're yeah, listening that, to, uh, to game, se- game I sessions. I think it goes a little longer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you you make a you make a good point that especially with uh, Star Wars, they they do the big story media idea very well. Yeah, it, it's about complementing the like, the other the other thing that you're doing. It's not it's not about creating the same thing; it's complementing it. It's let's take the Clone Wars for example. Not the entire Clone Wars series, the, the TV series, which. Amazing. I love it. I loved watching it as a kid. I remember that first movie came out and then the series was announced and all that. That was great. Yeah. They they take the idea of that big story media. They do it well. Do you uh, remember the episode where uh, Delta Squad shows up? 
Uh, Delta Squad, which one? Uh, yeah, you... uh, oh, Commandos. You got Boss, Sev, Scorch, and oh, Fixer. yeah. That blew my mind. I was like, whoa, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. I remember playing that when I was little with my dad. Or more watching him play it with watching him and my uncle play it. Mm -hmm. I remember that. And that was so impactful. And then it's like, yeah, that acknowledging a different part of the universe exists. And they're, uh, they're getting more interactive in that story there. Yeah. And that's the idea of the big story media. It draws you into different parts and this is different stories in the same universes in different mediums draw you in and it doesn't tell you the same story over and over again it introduces you to new parts of a different character's story so if you see delta squad in that show and you're like yeah what well, wonder who those guys are why are they so important and you look at the games and it's like oh yeah there's a game cool say you're a gamer and you would never have like you're like ah tv series too long i never touched that but you hear that delta squad's in it you'd be like okay maybe i will yeah. uh I haven't seen the Bad Batch. Uh, I don't know if we should do spoiler alert here or something. Uh, have you seen that? I, or? I have seen all of the Bad Batch. Um, to be absolutely honest, it kind of fell off for me at the very end. Um, it just didn't. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't. It didn't hit home for the first season, like I expected it to. From like you know Dave Filoni and. And like John Favreau, the, like Dave Filoni was was the main producer of it, and you know it it just didn't it didn't hit home for me at, at the very end. It just kind of felt like it something was missing. I don't know exactly what, but yeah, I felt like something was missing. Uh, I uh, I haven't seen it. But I, I do uh, thank you, Internet, for uh, incessant desire to leak and spoil everything. Oh. Uh, I, I know that uh, Delta Squad is related into the story somehow, which when I heard about that, that gave me even more of an incentive to want to check it out and watch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and it also links up with the comic book series of like Clone Commando's comic book series and the old Clone Commandos books from shoot, the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's... Although I, a there, little... There are some really good episodes in it, though. Like, really good. So, I do recommend watching it still. Um, but, yeah, personally, you, if, if you you watch it, and you can give me your, your opinion on it later, but, like, Personally, I, I definitely it, have to. It it definitely it, it just didn't 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 hit home like how Clone Wars did with me. Um, Clone Wars was just like amazing. I, I loved it. I th I think it's I think it's because Clone Wars was it, it it didn't stick with with the characters that the, the main characters like Anakin, uh, Ahsoka, and. Obi Wan, it, it didn't really stick with them like all the time. It would it also like focused on the clones, Rex, and and uh, like di different Jedi's through, throughout throughout the order. Uh, Palpatine, Yoda, like all, like it just went like to all the different characters, and each of their stories was just vastly different, and it it, it just gave you this feeling of like oh you're like you're you get to watch diff different parts. Like it, it was like multiple stories in one. Whereas, whereas like things like yeah. rebels, like, like the rebels, t the rebels TV, TV show, it, it sticks with one, one squadron. And yeah, the, like you get to, you get to like become familiar with that squadron very, very well, but it doesn't have that same feel. It just doesn't. And kind of the same thing kind of yeah. ha happens here inside uh, bad batch though the quality is mu is much better than 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 in rebels. So that's my that's my two cents. Uh, 
Well, I'm still definitely going to check out Bad Batch because mm-hmm. definitely, I want I want to see and want to see if I agree with your opinion or if I have a, a disagreement and why or why not we agree or disagree. Yeah, that's that would be cool. That's the best part because then we we could try to convince each other whether like the, the differences. I, I I'm not yeah yeah so. Definitely go watch it after this. Start start watching it after this. Okay, <laughs> that's your homework. All right, I will do that. <laughs> that's my homework. We'll discuss it while bowling. Yes. Uh, um, lastly, is there anything else you would like to discuss before we finish this conversation? Uh, just what one last thing. Mm-hmm. About about like the big story media. I, I know we both we've been talking a lot about like stories, podcasts, and like uh, tabletop RPGs and stuff like that. And I just want to give the disclaimer that worry if you're a story writer and you're not if you wrote a book or stories and you're not interested in podcasts or uh, tabletop RPGs stuff like that you. And, and you still want to do the, the big media story, big story media thing. You don't have to stick to just a podcast or a tabletop RPG or thing like that. It's, it's important that if you're looking to do that, you do what works for you. Something enjoy, something that brings you joy that you can also use to bring others joy. Mm-hmm. Um, a good example of this is Dungeons and Dragons, right? I, I'm sure you, you do. But Dungeons no, and Dragons. What is that? They Please. have a cookbook. <laughs> no, right? I don't know either. I hear some people talking about it. Just It sounds weird, man. <laughs> now, people who are like, ah, oh, Dungeons and Dragons, okay, that's, that's not my cup of tea. That's kind of lame. Yeah. But Dungeons and Dragons least a cookbook oh, i have I, a copy of it i, I heard about recipes that. are great <laughs> yeah, the recipes are the recipes are nice yeah uh, i'll give them that <laughs> and the people who weren't interested in dungeon dragons they're like you're telling me book of like fantasy items okay that sounds a little little quirky okay i can be on board with that and they would like read it and they're like okay i may not like dungeon dragons but I can vibe with this cookbook. Cool. And there's like the little, like little, like lore tidbits of like uh, explaining like some of the recipes or like, <laughs> oh, this dish it, it's mystical. It's from like uh, the dwarves made this for this reason. It's based on this monster. But but don't worry, if you don't have, if you don't have monster guts, you can substitute. You can substitute um, it for for hot uh, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> If, if you don't have a liquefied black pudding from a, an actual black pudding ooze, uh, store-bought chocolate syrup is fine. Mm-hmm. And it just, it's just a little bit of fun in-universe stuff like that. And it's a cookbook. It, it expands the universe. It tells of different dishes from different places in the world. And it's just amazing how like you can broaden that out with just a, something as simple as a little cookbook. So maybe you like cooking and you want to showcase all the different recipes in your world. I, I know I personally, I like cooking a lot and yeah, I've actually got it. I do that in the future sometime. I've actually gotten into cooking as well and having a Dungeons and Dragons cookbook while you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. That actually sounds really cool because then you could just, Make a meal, making themed for, snacks for the players yes. <laughs> here, yeah. and, and actually, like you go down to the tavern, and uh, what, what would you like to order? Well, right? you actually open the cookbook. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a list of items you made from the cookbook. Yeah, it's like what type of experience? It allows is you that? to immerse yourself even more. <laughs> yeah, or, or okay, maybe cooking's not your thing. Uh, maybe you like. Sewing. Oh, you like sewing? What? What? What's stopping you from making a marketable, collectible plushie 
your, your series or your story. Could easily do that. And could ever see it, but maybe you and your friends, but that's still, still something you could do to enjoy your, enjoy the world. You can, I don't know, make a shirt or something and I think people enjoy it. Uh, heck, songwriting. Yeah. Yeah, songwriting, uh, making little games, Pro- maybe board producing games. Producing music. You're board games. Yeah, like, like a- any, yeah. anything. Uh, honestly. Yeah, heck, have like an official soundtrack to go for your book. Like, okay, when you get to this chapter, play this song beforehand to uh, feel this sort of mood. Yeah. Or have uh, like ha- have an ambiance loop that goes through each chapter that gives these like these moods. Yeah, and, and you read it, um, and it, eventually, you, as you as you read it with the the music, it feels like the actual music goes with the story beats. That would be amazing. Yeah, <laughs> that that would be amazing. There's so much you can do to expand your own story world, and. It's just finding what works for you and finding how to do it, how you can fit it in. And I, I am confident when I say, don't you worry. And, and I'm talking to you listener, right now. Don't you worry. You'll, you'll find a way to do it. I know you will. Uh, think a little bit. Well, your, your story's good. And there's stuff that you'll... Uh, be able to figure out yeah well i think that that is a great place to end this episode thank you michael so much for this conversation thank you very much matthew it's it's been a pleasure it's been an absolute pleasure and i look forward to bowling with you and meeting up again for another podcast i look forward to bowling with you as well and another podcast as well would be awesome. All right. Have a great rest of your day. You too. And have a great rest of your day to everyone else who's listening. I thank you for listening to our conversation. If you'd like to hear more guest entries like this one, go over and become a free member at our theatinanthologies.com to not miss another episode like this. And if you're interested in becoming a guest yourself, You can fill out an entry form at the site's homepage. Until next time, travelers, be safe, stay safe, and if death comes to you, may you be reborn in power.